This video is going to be all about Kotaku's review of the Valve Index headset. When it comes right down to it, it boils to a few key details. For starters, there is the knuckles, hand, and finger tracking. Although the finger tracking itself is great, well, it only has a few different functions. It showed its primary use in the Aperture Hand Labs demo, which is, of course, designed by Valve. But the problem is, a lot of third-party titles, titles probably aren't going to be able to cover this feature. One particular example shown in the article is Vacation Simulator. Although it received a patch in order to allow you to be able to move your fingers freely, none of the robots seem to respond at all. So that motion in itself likely not going to receive a whole lot of support over the coming months, years, however long this headset is out. Valve has not done a great job with uh, hardware over the last few years, but hopefully this ends up changing that. But as far as the usefulness of this option, not really great. Unless you want to go for more first party VR titles. And depending on how much money they want to make, that may actually be the case. And then next, you also have to take a look at tracking itself. This one is the only major headset at this point that uses outside in tracking and uses lighthouses or the tr little tracking boxes that you have to set up in the corners of your room in order to be able to properly track your location, the controllers, the headset, everything. You still need to set up those, those lighthouses for the Index, but not for the HTC uh, Vive Cosmos, and not for the Oculus Rift, Rift S. Well, well you, you did for the Rift, but you don't have to do it for the Rift S or for the Quest, obviously. And a, quite a few of the enterprise products of HTC don't use outside in tracking either. So this one is, like I said, the only major headset at this point that uses outside in tracking rather than inside out. This sound system, again, it is great. One thing that was touched on in the article was that the bleed, the sound coming from the speakers that are near your ear rather than on top of it or in your ear, there isn't a whole lot of sound that comes directly from the speaker that bleeds into the room. So say you're playing, you're, you're playing Vacation Simulator or Beat Saber or, or whatever it is you play. I, I don't know. And, well, whatever you play, that's on you. But, say you're playing a game, and your, your friend Jeff is over there in the corner, and he, he's playing on a Switch. He, he's just having fun playing on his Nintendo Switch. And, he, he's just going to be in his own little world, but he won't be able to hear anything that's going on in your headset, assuming you have the screen off. Whatever computer monitor screen is that the system is connected to is off. As long as that monitor is off, Jeff over there won't be able to hear anything that's going on out of your headset. But you, on the other hand, are going to be able to get quite the immersive experience. And then, next up, you do have to consider the setup itself. One thing that was touched on in the article was that it took around an hour to set up the the headset itself not only to to the computer but to configure the the room space itself so that in itself can get very tedious because like i said this one is the only one that is going to be outside in so you would still need to configure the lighthouses and, and all that 
but all in all, not a not a great headset by the by the sounds of it. it it's great specifications wise. It it'll get it will be able to give you quite the level of fidelity when it comes to your pictures and your sound. But well, it's too good. You know what I mean? You're able to see all all the the sounds and you're you're able to see the music and you're able to hear the pictures. And I know those are backwards and I don't care. Because there's also one major, major thing that's it's just eating me up, but I don't know what it is. It might be that cable that's going to stick out of the back of your friggin' head that you still need to attach to the computer. Although Valve is looking into a few different methods for a wireless headset, one of the biggest issues that they ended up considering in this other article I'll be talking about is that it's not really difficult per se but rather costly so they did want to make the system lighter and well untethered but the problem with that is they didn't want to make it too expensive I suppose so those are the biggest things that you will have to worry about assuming you do decide to spend the thousand dollars necessary to get everything for the Valve Index headset which would come with <clears throat> excuse me the headset itself the lighthouses for tracking and the knuckles controllers depending on what you get you can end up breaking those up you can end up getting the headset itself for just 500 you could get the headset and controllers themselves for 750 you could get the controllers on their own for 280 or if you're feeling really adventurous, you could get the the lighthouses for I, I, I can't remember how much it was, like 300, probably. Um, chances are I'm wrong, but that's about what you're looking at. Plus, any kind of new orders that are placed at this point are going to have to wait until late September in order to even get shipped. So. I'm not even really sure what to tell you at this point, assuming this is something that you want to take a look at. If you liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible human being for giving you all this news. Ta-ta for now.